Pele, the goddess of fire, was important to the Hawaiian people because their homelands were born of fire. The lands on which they lived began as sub-oceanic volcanoes, spreading out on the ocean floor, spiraling thousands of feet upward, and finally breaking the ocean surface to become islands. The Hawaiian Islands are actually a chain of volcanic islands, stretching 1,500 miles across the Pacific Ocean. The largest and youngest is the island of Hawaii, which has mountain peaks reaching over 13,000 feet above sea level. Most of the islands in the chain, however, are older and have been eroded back to sea level by the powerful winds and waves of the Pacific. These low-lying islands are called atolls. The island of Oahu was formed by two massive volcanoes, which are the backbones of the island's two mountain ranges, the Waianae and the Ko'ulau. Erosion caused a broad valley to form between these two mountain ranges. Valley streams carrying rainwater to the sea converged to form an inland bay or lagoon. This clover-shaped lagoon would be important to man over the centuries for many different reasons. When did humans first find these islands, and where did they come from? Archaeologists believe these islands were first inhabited approximately 1,500 years ago. In terms of world history, this was not a long time ago. People first arrived on these islands about the time of the fall of the Roman Empire, or Europe's entry into the Dark Ages. Hawaii's first inhabitants were Polynesians, who had migrated northward from Tahiti and the Marquesas Islands. These were bold seafaring people who had developed their navigational skills through centuries of using the sky, stars, seasonal winds, and sea currents to sail throughout the South Pacific Islands. These ancient mariners had developed double-hulled sailing canoes measuring up to 80 to 100 feet in length. These canoes could carry the people livestock, and plants required to establish island colonies. Hawaii marked the northern extent of this Polynesian culture. The ancient Hawaiians developed an elaborate civilization consisting of ruling chiefs, priests, and commoners. They developed sophisticated agricultural and aquacultural systems, and because of the extensive knowledge of the sea, were excellent fishermen. On the island of Oahu, the bounty of the sea was contained in the lagoon on its southern shore, called Pu'uloa. It was said that these warm, shallow waters, teeming with fish and containing vast beds of shellfish, were patrolled by a powerful shark goddess. One of the many shellfish in Pu'uloa was an oyster that produced small pearls of irregular shape and color. These were not valued by the native Hawaiians, but later, foreigners would be intrigued by their occurrence, and the lagoon would forever be known as Pearl Harbor. In ancient Hawaii, fish ponds lined most of Pu'uloa's shoreline. These were ingenious mechanisms for trapping, raising, and ultimately harvesting fish for the ruling chiefs. They were constructed by extending a rock wall into the lagoon that connected two points of land and isolated a portion of the lagoon. The ponds ranged in size from a few acres to over 200 acres. One or more slatted gates were built into the wall, allowing nutrient-rich tidal water to enter the fish ponds, but keeping the larger fish inside. Remnants of over 27 fish ponds have been identified along the shores of Pearl Harbor. The first contact between Hawaii and the European world took place when British explorer Captain James Cook encountered the islands in 1778. He named these lands the Sandwich Islands in honor of Britain's Earl of Sandwich. The following year, while exploring the islands more thoroughly, Captain Cook was welcomed as a returning god by the Hawaiians. After a few weeks on the islands, relations between Cook's crew and the natives became strained, and he was killed in a bitter dispute over some stolen property. After the death of Captain Cook, explorers from many countries showed interest in the islands. 
but because Hawaii was near the western shores of the United States, American presence became dominant. In the early 1800s, hundreds of ships and thousands of sailors from New England were drawn to the lucrative Pacific whaling industry off the islands of Oahu and Maui. Soon, the subtropical climate, tillable lands, and abundance of fresh water on Oahu were recognized as being ideal for agricultural purposes. Along with the native sugarcane, pineapples were introduced to the island, followed by coffee. By the mid-1800s, plantation agriculture was the backbone of the Hawaiian economy, and the plantation owners were a powerful political force. It was during this period of time that many immigrant workers from East Asia came to the islands, followed later by immigrants from Puerto Rico, Portugal, and other countries. These planters pressured the Hawaiian monarchy to obtain a trade treaty with the United States, giving them access to growing cities along the West Coast and a duty-free, tax-free status. The U.S. government, of course, wanted something in return for this treaty. And in time, discussions centered on securing exclusive rights to Pearl Harbor as a refueling station for its naval operations. This was not a popular idea in Hawaii, but eventually, in 1887, a reciprocity treaty was signed, yielding Pearl Harbor to the United States. In 1893, the monarchy was overthrown, largely by commercial interests in the islands, and the Republic of Hawaii was formed. After winning the Spanish-American War of 1898, U.S. interests in the Pacific grew. It had acquired the territories of the Philippines and Guam from Spain, thereby possessing a direct access to Asia. Pearl Harbor suddenly became a strategic military port in the Pacific to support this Asian activity. Later that same year, the United States annexed Hawaii as a territory. In the next few years, the U.S. Navy began transforming Pearl Harbor from a quiet inland bay into a world-class naval base. In 1902, this process began with the dredging of the harbor, followed by the initial construction of shipyards. Over the next 30 years, continual construction expanded the shipyards, adding dry docks, berthing areas, hangars, airfields, and a submarine base, until Pearl Harbor had become the United States' foremost offshore military installation. <laughs>